Exercise 12 asks us to look at expenses. Expenses are outflows of net assets caused by the operation of the business. Expenses result in decreases to equity. Letter A, the company paid $12,200 cash for office supplies that were purchased more than a year ago. This transaction decreases assets and liabilities by $12,200 but leaves total equity the same. Expenses result in decreases to equity, so letter A is not an expense. Letter B, the company paid $1,233 in cash for the just completed two-week salary of the receptionist. This transaction decreases both assets and equity, and because this reduction in equity was caused by the operation of the business, this does meet our definition of an expense. Letter C. The company paid $39,200 in cash for the equipment purchased. This transaction decreases one asset cash and increases another asset equipment. Total equity remains unchanged. This is not an expense. Letter D. The company paid $870 in cash for this month's utilities. This transaction decreases assets cash and also decreases equity. Because the reduction in equity was caused by the operation of the business, this too is an expense. And finally, Letter E. The owner, Thomas, withdrew $4,500 in cash from the company for personal use. This transaction decreases both assets and equity, but the reduction in equity was not caused by the operation of the business, but by the owner personally. Letter E is not an expense. When we journalize our two expense transactions, we have letter B, a debit to salaries expense and a credit to cash, and letter D, debit to utilities expense and a credit to cash. And what's important about exercise 12 is to realize that although all five transactions result in outflows of cash, they don't all necessarily meet our definition of an expense. You can part with cash and exchange it for another asset, as we did in C, and your net worth stays the same. Sometimes we part with cash and we also pay off liabilities, as we did in letter A. So just because we pay cash doesn't mean it's an expense. And since we've already talked about the revenue recognition principle, it's time that we look at something called the matching principle. The matching principle governs the timing of expenses. Expenses are recorded in the same time period as the revenues they help generate. Both the salaries and the utilities are necessary expenses to generate the current period's revenues. The revenue recognition principle governs the top portion of our income statement, the revenues, and the matching principle governs the bottom portion of our income statement, the expenses.